Alrighty, this is the latest version in Mac Daddy Autos. I think I'm going to classify this as Mac Daddy Deluxe. So, I'm going to talk about what happened with this bad boy and the, the plans that I have. So, let's turn it off. Okay, man. This is the fifth week in the car rental business and I'll start with the most craziest thing that happened. The Porsche was stolen. The renter got hijacked. The best performing car I had in the fleet is now gone. So apparently they were messing around at 930. Someone pulled the gun on them and took the car. So police reports been filed, but I'm looking at a minimum of five to six weeks before I get reimbursed for that car. Five weeks in, and I've already had a car stolen. Stolen, stolen. Next thing, um, I've watched a lot of videos about Turo and hire car, and I have never seen anyone even talk about these issues that I'm having five weeks in. I keep saying this five weeks in. Um, last night, someone rented a Range Rover. Well, had a Range Rover. And at 2.45, they were calling me because something happened with the key. And this is one of the things that I keep noticing is people have very poor communication. Did he lose the key? Was the key damaged? What happened to the key? And I hit him back this morning. I haven't heard from him. Now, this Range Rover only has one key. And this is something else you need to do. When you're buying these cars for rental cars, and if it only has one key, you need to call the dealership to get a key made and find out how much that price is and have that taken off the price of the car because you will need spare keys in this business. You will need spare keys. The majority of the cars I have have two keys. I have three, four, I have four that don't have keys, um, that only have one key, but they're, the ch they're, they're typically cheaper. I've got one Range Rover, key doesn't work. I have an Acura, I don't think the key, the second key works. It's got like a regular key versus the, you push the buttons, the uh, remote. So I think the remote's messed up on that, I don't know. And, um, what else happened this week i bought seven cars including this one now this one i financed fifty thousand dollars six hundred dollars per month my eyes water every time i say that because i've not had a car note in god knows when but the reason i did that is i have a budget of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars i've moved the budget because essentially let's talk about my budget where's my budget coming from Remember when I was showing you guys all of those receipts, $50,000 in my checking account, personal checking account, $100,000 in my personal checking account, $150,000 in my personal checking account. That's where the money came from to buy these cars cash. Except this one I did not buy cash, and I'm going to explain why. Uh, I'm working with a $250,000 budget, and I'll probably use my salary to buy more cars. Um, so... $50,000 is one car. And I don't know if this experiment's going to work. It's on Toro, it's on Hire Car, it hasn't gone out yet, but I just got it Thursday. So I don't really know what's going to go on with this car. So if this car is a failure, all I'll do is just pay it off real quick because I'm not going to, it's like $600 for 60 months or 72 months, something like that. Uh, they gave me 200,000. I could have bought one car for 200,000, but I'm just not, I don't think where I'm at in the business is I'm at the level where I can rent luxury cars like that. Uh, one, just having one $200,000 car, um, I just don't feel that that's just going to be worth it. So I didn't do that. And also very interesting. I'm trending, just depending on how this month goes, 
18 to 22,000. This is my second month, right? I have watched a number of Toro uh, videos and the majority of these people took four to five years to get to 20 some thousand dollars a month. Four to five years. Why am I able to scale so fast? There's many arguments. People will tell you that credit is better than cash. I watched someone and he said he could only buy 12 cars. I am at 15 minus one, the stolen Porsche, and I will probably next week be at 20 cars. So in this case, if I was financing due to my high income, I could probably finance all these cars at 400. I would probably have, let's see, 4,000, 20 cars, let's say $8,000 a month in car payments, 8,000, um, maybe even 10,000. Because the more cars you buy, the higher interest rates you get on each subsequent car. So I could finance, but let's say my, my car payments were 10,000 and my business made 18,000. With car payments and insurance, I'm only gonna be able to slide like $6,000 in my pocket. But since the majority of my cars are paid for, like 99% of them, uh, I just have the cost of insurance. So if I make 18, my insurance is gonna cost me 1,200. So I'll be able to slide $16,000 in my pocket. Uh, once again, we, we don't really know because like I said, next week, last week was a really, really, good week. I was able to get five cars for $41,000. I got three Camrys. I got two Acras. The Acras, I got to say the Acras are a nice product. They are really a nice product. Uh, I never drove one. And, and, and until this, I've been in a few Mercedes, but I never really drove a Mercedes. This is right up there with what I have in the garage, the BMW and the Porsche. So if this experiment fails and I have to keep it, I'm not going to be mad that I got a convertible because essentially when I was buying those two cars, I was thinking about buying an M4 convertible, but I could never actually find one that I like. So I just kind of let it go. So this is one of the reasons I bought this one. Uh, it's pretty sweet. It's a two seater V8 twin turbo. I have a feeling that if I wanted to make it faster, I can get it tuned. So we will look into that, but we will see how that will rent out. But man, five weeks in, I had someone keep the car for 10 days. Five weeks in, I had someone get a ticket. Oh, when someone gets a non-moving ticket, the ticket doesn't go with them. The ticket comes back to the car owner. I had one guy that passed a school bus and that was a hundred dollar ticket. He actually paid that. Um, I had someone, and this is something else too. I had someone had one of the cars towed. Now, because they are renting the car, they can't go to the impound lot to get the car out without my permission since I own the car. Let me say this again. So someone could be renting your car and your car could be towed and they can't go get it without you. So part of this is because I'm keeping all kinds of notes because this is just my fifth week of doing this, right? And I'm going to hire people. So I already know that I have to have a copy of my driver's license in the office so my employees can send it to whoever needs it. So once again, now with this key issue, I don't know what's going on with this key issue, but since I've got, this happened with hire car and I'm doing the 70% uh, payout, they have replacements. So if I have to go, if the renter lost the key, then I can go to hire car and get reimbursed for that $700 in the towing of the car, because the key is going to be 700 and the towing of the car is going to be 150. So that's $850 their hire car is going to have to pay me because it's part of their insurance program. So I'm, 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 I'm calming down because one of the things that I'm seeing is 
Um, this business has a lot of issues that spell money. Let me say this again. There's so many issues here. Like number one, you got to have two keys for your car. And I don't know what people be doing the keys. I don't know what I've got. I got the key. I got two. Well, when I bought the Porsche, um, I got the Porsche. Um, they actually ordered another key and gave it to me because I had to go back and pick it up like a day or so later and they, they got me a key. But essentially these keys are really important and these keys are very expensive. Like I said, the Range Rover key is $700. I only got one key with this one and I should have negotiated because essentially I got a good deal because this is right in line with private party Kelly Blue Book. So conceivably, if I wanted to sell it, I could sell it for more than I paid for it. So that's a good deal because if it wrecked, I would get the insurance. I also, since I financed it, I put it on my state foreign policy. All of my other cars are on the Geico policy because since I financed it, I got to have full coverage. So that's on State Farm. So essentially, I'm starting to get my head and shoulders around this business. But once again, and this is one of the reasons that I think that these YouTubers who do these one week and 30 day challenges are full of crap. All right, I'm doing this five weeks and I got to the end of June to collect more data. I am still in the data collection phase. Now I know I got to have two keys. Now I know uh, how I can get around that. Now I know I got to, you know, the GPS trackers. Let's talk about the GPS trackers. This is a big, big issue. Everyone's like trackers, trackers, trackers. You have not called up these places that install these trackers. It's usually car stereo shops. And typically there are backed up here in Atlanta. One place told me, there was a three month wait list. Another place told me six weeks and another place told me two to three weeks. So what I'm going to have to do in the future is hire my own GPS technician because next year when I'm buying 30 cars a month, I'm not going to be able to buy 30 cars, let them sit for three to three months until I get these. Cause essentially this is my thing on the GPS. The GPS is in worst case scenario. And I feel that like 95, 99% of my renters are stable, sane, decent people. So this is some insurance and I will do it, but I'm not going to be in a rush to do it because I would lose thousands and thousands of dollars waiting for these guys to install these trackers. You know, it's easy to say this from the YouTube gallery, but when you're out here doing it, you will find out it ain't that easy. It ain't that easy. Another thing I've discovered, and this is with Turo, I need to get an airport drop pickup location, someplace close to the airport. I have seen this several, several times. I've seen people on Turo who had airport as the pickup location, cars stay rented, stay rented, stay rented, stay rented. So what I'm probably going to do, like, let me tell you my plan. Um, my Wells Fargo secured credit card should convert s October. I'm going to say September would be 12 months. So I'm going to say the car should convert October. So if I can go ahead and open up a line of credit with Wells Fargo or get what's called a floor plan, a floor plan is special financing for car dealers. If I can get a floor plan, what I will do is take all of that money and I will go ahead and create an airport facility because I've seen it time and time again. You will have people who are in Duluth, Alpharetta, um, Cobb County, Marietta, and their cars don't go out that much. But if you're near the airport, it's, it's always out. It's always out. It's always out. So I would have two locations. I would have the Sandy Springs location and I would have a place. Uh, I'm probably going to roll over there some point today 
to check out um, some rental spots because this is an ideal in my mind. Go ahead, get an airport facility, have 30 cars at the airport facility, hire three, four people, right? And what I would do is have one of my employees go pick people up from the airport. So that is a level of service that, you know, we'll pick you up because if we bring them the car, um, then the person who brings them the car has got to get back to the facility. So it works a little bit better if they go to the airport, pick them up. And this is why I, the place has got to be close to the airport, no less than 10 minutes from the airport. So we could say airport pickup and essentially we will pick you up, bring you to um, the car. And I might do something like that with this one. I don't know. I got to think about it. I got to work on it. But essentially from a revenue standpoint, this month I'm already at two thousand dollars and it's just the six so and I've got another car that goes out today I've got a bunch of cars and here, here's another issue that this happening tags once I get my dealer's license and I'm gonna have to light a fire under my office because they haven't even cashed my first check that I, I gave them, they haven't cashed the check. So I gotta find out what's going on with them because once I get my dealer's license, I would be able to get a car and take the title and go have the car titled in the business name the next day and get a tag the next day. Because the tags, the tags, uh, I got a few cars back and I was able to put tags on them, but I got a few cars that are out and I need to go ahead and get them to come in so we can do the tag. So there's a lot of communication. But essentially, I know that with business, that when you have a lot of problems, like let's kind of go back. Like essentially, this is something I'm doing for my storage auction days. I have created a buying profile. Now, what does that mean? One of the reasons that I buy Acras is I know someone who can fix them. I know someone, I've known this dude like 20 years. He has a shop in, Lawrence, in Tucker and he works on Hondas and Acras. So if anything goes wrong with them, I got someone I know I can trust. And one of the reasons I, I got a shop that I know and trust, I've been going to them for years, that can work on my luxury cars. So I've developed a buying profile. Like the buying profile really came in last week when I got those five key cars, because those five cars, I got them for an average of $8,200 per car, which is well under my $10,000 threshold. So with this car, I got to look at it because essentially like the Porsche, that's a big loss. I'm not going to be able, once I get money, I'm not going to be able to go out and find that car again. I think that's one of the reasons that it went because it was black, it was clean, it had radar detector. I, I, I'm just pissed off because of the criminal element out there because I've called the cops and everything and I'm just sitting there like the best performing asset I had in the fleet would be the first thing to go. I mean... You know, I will be made hold at some point. It's just the process. But I know that higher cars insurance is not going to cut me a check before uh, the car has to be missing 30 days before they will even think about cutting the check. So that's 30 days that my asset, that $20,000 I paid for that car, will not be working. Because that car between Toro and hire car that car earned 1500 bucks and would have been well on its way to earning me probably another 1500 this month so that's a big loss and this is something that i've not heard anyone talk about but yeah they stole my car man they stole my car so essentially we're still collecting data we're still collecting data 
And this is why I feel these YouTubers who do these 30 day challenges are full of it because 30 days isn't enough time for you to get enough data and feedback for your business. Like I said, I'm five weeks in and I, there's still things that are gonna happen because what I'm doing is keeping um, a notebook of all this stuff so I can create a system and a process later. Uh, this year, other than maybe a weekend trip, I'm not taking any vacations because one of the things that you see, especially with Turo, people love to communicate. They will book the car and then hit you up with a message. They love to communicate. So I already know that when I create the airport facility that uh, I'm gonna have a special phone and I'm gonna announce it that this isn't an individual, this is a company and you will have multiple people that you will be touching bases with. Someone will come pick you up at the airport and essentially um, maybe for local renters because I need, and one of the reasons is I wanna have 30 cars, like having five cars, um, that's, that's just the economies of scale don't kick in. But if I got 30 cars or 50 cars, I got people going to pick up people, bring them to the car, because essentially, I don't know how I'm gonna do it because I could go have someone pick them up or I could have someone, two people, once again, two people, to, someone to drive the car to the customer, someone to drive a vehicle to pick them up or do Uber. I gotta really crunch the numbers because you know, what's gonna be the most cost-effective way to do this? But what's, you know, I, I just like the ideal of having a service that we come pick you up at the airport and bring you to the car. You know, you're traveling, you're dealing with your bags, you're kind of stressed, you know, and I was thinking of buying a Range Rover as the pickup vehicle. Just, you know, have uh, connections for their, you know, the charge their phone, connections to, um, have some water, maybe have some sandwiches or something in the back. I don't know, we're not there yet. But essentially, that's in the future. And I'm gonna tell you why it's in the future. I'm figuring out how Toro works. If you've been on the Toro website a long time, Toro pushes your ads, they push your listings. Because I've seen this over and over again. I've seen people who've been on Toro since 2015, uh, I've, I've just seen it over and over and over and over and over again that these people who've been on the platform for a while really, really get pushed. Their cars get pushed. And it makes sense because if you're doing a good job of renting out your cars and taking care of Toro's customers, once again, they're not your customers. They're Toro's customers. They're Toro's customers. Remember that. And if you do a good job, and then they, they, they will push more business your way. So I see that, but essentially, that's what I will do with the floor plan, the line of credit, once I get it, is buy 30 cars, put GPS trackers on it, hire three to four people, and here's something else too. Everybody wants to do stuff on the weekends. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do this. I may have the airport facility open Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and maybe weekends off. I don't know. Essentially, each stage of this business, you have to test things out. And this is why these YouTubers with these 30-day challenges are full of crap. Because let's say I get the airport facility up and I go ahead and hire people and we start rolling. We're not going to know what's going to happen until we start rolling. We may find out that we may need more staffing from seven to three and less staffing from uh, three to 11. We may find out that it may be worth it to hire additional staff for the weekend. But until we get there, we don't know. And this is one of the things, like I bought this car, I don't know how it's going to do. I have no clue. I don't know if it's going to be a hit. I don't know. I have no clue. Now, I do know if I had this car set up with an airport address, it would be rented. Because I'm out here in Sandy Springs. I am 30-something minutes from the airport. So, you know, people are really cost conscious. So you rent this car. It's a lot of money. Then you got to spend all this money on the Uber to go get it. That ain't very attractive. 
that ain't very attractive. It's kind of like you fill up your shopping cart online with a bunch of good stuff, but the, the shipping is too expensive. So it makes you rethink the whole purchase. So once we get there, but for now I'm riding with hire car because hire car works out here in Sandy Springs because these are local people. I've had, now this is something else that's funny. When I put the, once the Range Rovers come back in, the Range Rovers, cause oh, this is something else you could do with hire car. Do you know you can call up hire car and, and have your pricing adjusted? Um, hire car typically rents for 30 to 70 bucks a day, right? Well, if you, and this is something else, hire car, all of their customer service reps are friendly and helpful. I will give them that but all customer service reps at hire car are not created equal. If you get the right customer service rep, they can drop insurance and change the price of your car just like that. So I got this on hire car for 150 a day. I got it on Toro for 200 a day. I have a feeling this is going to go out on hire car first. I just have a feeling unless I can get that airport address. So, um, once the Range Rovers and the BMW come back, because I have one Range Rover at 100 bucks a day. Uh, it was on hire car for two days and it got rented. Essentially the Range Rover where I don't know what's going on with the key. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the key. But essentially I'm already seeing things I'm gonna have to do for the future. Like this whole year is gonna be spent with me learning the business and creating systems and processes because my goal, because essentially my lunch month, and let's talk about that. Right now, I'm in experimental phase. I don't consider this start. I feel that my start month is going to be August, and I'm going to tell you why. August, I'm going to have 20 something cars, and that I will have a, you know, in August, I will have my commercial insurance policy, and in August, I'll be better able to really launch this the way that I want to launch it. Because like I said, uh, one two row person, he's got 14 cars. One of his car payments is $893 on a $39,000 car, which means he's paying 17% interest. I got this car, $50,000 car for 2.8%, I believe. And I know that if I go out and buy a bunch of cars in my personal name, each car, the interest rate is going to go up. Even though I have good credit, it's going to go up. So this is why I want to do a line of credit. And let me tell you why I want to do a line of credit. Do the line of credit so I can go ahead and pay cash for the cars, get the title, title the car in the company name, put it on the commercial insurance policy. Because essentially, uh, what I'm learning is we're gonna have to have an intake process and I'm gonna need some help with this. I'm gonna, like, when I get to 30 cars, cause like, I bought five cars and that took, I couldn't even move all the cars the first day. It took two days to move the cars. So I already see that when I start buying 20 and 30 cars, I'm going to need some extra, I'm going to need some help because essentially two people, that's going to be 15 trips in an Uber. That's going to take two, two, maybe two, three days to move all those cars. And then you got to move the car to, well, one thing is when you buy these cars, none of them have any gas. So you got to do gas, get an oil change, get the car inspected. And then put the GPS on it and do all of that. So I'm still, it's going to take me a few months to refine and develop my intake process because, you know, I'm still learning. This is a business that I know nothing about. This is a business that I've been watching YouTubers. I found out a lot of information. It may be good if you're in their market and this is something else too. With Toro, what market you in is radically different. I checked Toro out in New York. They can get 
twice as much for one, the same car as we can in Atlanta. Twice as much across the board. So we got that. Also, when I get my commercial insurance policy, I will be able to put cars on Toro and get 92% of the rental rate. 92% because I will be, uh, So, <laughs> so one of the things is with the commercial policy, the commercial policy gives me more options because I can set up my own website and rent cars to anyone since I now have a commercial policy and anyone that rents. But with Hire Car or Toro, they have to go through hire car or Toro for me to be covered by their policy. Once I get my own policy, <coughs> once I get my own policy, then I will be, the doors open wide open. And I may have my own commercial policy in July because what I, and this, this is one of the things I got to do. I got to take all of the vehicles off of Turo and off of hire car and relist them to be able to get that better in payout rate because I can do 85% rate from hire car and I can do a 92% rate on Turo. And why? Am I waiting until I get 20 something cars for my commercial insurance? The more cars you have, your, with commercial insurance, you have a threshold. If you had like five cars and three of them had claims, they're not gonna renew your policy because you have way too many claims in ratio to the number of cars you had. But if I got 20 cars and I had three claims, I'm good. And since I plan on adding more cars each and every month, my threshold, it, it keeps moving because when I started, you know, and essentially uh, one policy I looked at, it's $100 per car, which is cheaper than my personal insurance policy. It's way cheaper. So I'll be looking in that to July because the first thing is I want to get the cars. And also with Geico, you can only have nine cars on the policy and then they have to create some kind of multi-policy. So I will have three Geico policies by the time I get my commercial policy. So we will see um, <clears throat> how that goes. But yeah, this is just the fifth week in the, the car rental business. And once again, when I get to the buy here, pay here stuff, which is like a year away, that's about a year away. I will have the GPS trackers and the uh, ignition kill switches on and I already see that I'm going to have to have my own technician because essentially with business, the more problems that you solve, the more money that you make. And um, a lot of people don't seem to understand that you know, because I've had people hit me up on private, like, you know, this seemed like a lot of hassle. And guys, if you're willing to deal with the hassles, there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Like right now, I'm frustrated. I, I had a car stolen. I got a guy that I think lost a key, which means we're going to have to have the car towed to the dealership. Very, very frustrated, right? But I know there's so much money in this frustration. And that's why I'm gonna stick with it because uh, one of my favorite haters, we, who will remain nameless, like he ain't gonna stick with it. I'm just amazed at the number of people who are root for me to fail, who root for me to fail. And it, it's kind of funny because the reality is, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna be uh, conceited. The reality of the YouTubers that you watch in this space, the business space, the personal finance space, 
could not go out and pay cash for 20 cars. They can do it, but they're giving you advice on how to make money. I want you to really think about that because this is one of the things that piss me off. Someone in a little room with a headshot talking a good game with no receipts, no checking accounts, no ATM receipts, no cash, no proof, no proof. And now all of a sudden you got some, you got people out here doubting that I have a fleet of 15 cars because they will believe this person who pro provides no receipts, provides no evidence, none whatsoever. And I, I'm like, the majority of YouTubers you watch, you know, especially in the personal finance space, they're making a lot of YouTube money, but I guarantee you 99% of the people you watch on YouTube could not do what I've done in five weeks. They couldn't do it because you know what? They don't have the money. They don't have the money, but they're talking about like this one chick and I, I, I'm, I'm so pissed off. She talked about running Facebook ads as a side hustle. Anyone that has a social media agency know that's a full-time gig. They ain't something you can do part-time. And I'm just sitting there like, uh, I got a regular video on Savage Finance because you know it's gonna take me time to do these exposed videos because I'm gonna do them over at Savage Finance. But I'm about to start ripping people apart because they're feeding you BS. They're feeding you BS to get some views, to make some money, and if you try to do this stuff, it ain't gonna work. And that, that's just disgusting. And I'm about to go after some people. I got a hit list, but once again, you know, I got to uh, work on this, keep my eye on this. I got to manage my people. But in a year from now, I fully expect to have six to eight employees in this business. A year from now. And also, I'm gonna have to separate the businesses. And what do I mean? I'm gonna have to create another LLC to put the insurance policy for the rentals. Because when I open up my buy here, pay here lot, if I just have the rental company and I have the cars on the car insurance, it's two different levels of insurance. It's a different insurance policy for a car lot than it is for a rental car company. And essentially, if I don't do it correctly by separating the two companies, I could be paying twice as much money for insurance as I should because that's how they're gonna charge me. Once again, this is information you ain't getting nowhere else. You know what? Because nobody ain't doing this. They're out here talking the good game. Like, I already have more cars than 90, 95% of the Toro people you see on YouTube who've been doing this four and five years. Four and five years. I've been doing this five weeks. One month in one week. And I already have more cars. And by August, I'm gonna have more cars than 99% of them. We're running a business here. And once again, no, like I said, I'm frustrated. There's all kinds of problems. Someone stole a car, dude lost a key. All of these other things are going on, right? Well, one of the things that we need to understand and we need to look at is, and I want you guys to understand me, that starting a business, this is what you're gonna go through. And all of these YouTubers are talking about it's simple, it's easy, you don't have to do hard work. And these are the same people who don't have my money. I want you to think about that. These people who are telling you it's simple, it's easy to make all this money, but they don't have the money that I have. The guy who's telling you it's gonna be hard, you're gonna to have to work, you got things to do, you got trials and tribulations. Like when I woke up this morning and I saw all those texts on my message, it's like I need a key ASAP. I'm like, what happened to the key? This is one of the things I'm seeing is very poor communication. Like the guy who got carjacked, it, he, he wasn't real clear in his first message and then he got a little clear and I had to dig information out of him and I'm just sitting there like, so it's kind of funny. Um, I'm moving, I'm selling this puppy. Uh, my realtor should be here Tuesday and they say that this should sell pretty quickly. So I should be out of here by August and I'm gonna get a penthouse in Midtown. That's the goal, a penthouse in Midtown. And um, 
because essentially I'm going to keep the office out here in Sandy Springs and then I got to find the location in Hatefield or East Point for the airport facility because <clears throat> I'm not really going, I'm going to put stuff on Turo and once I, I may hold up until I get my commercial policy because the time on Turo is everything. If you're on Turo for a long time, you get a lot or, or you have a lot of cars because uh, my plan is to buy 30 cars and put them all on Turo at once. Boom. And then put the messaging in there that we will pick you up at the airport. I think that's going to be a really, really big uh, win once we get there. But that's going to be like December, January before we get there. And like right now, I'm riding out with Hire Car because Hire Car is working, Hire Car is producing revenue, Hire Car is making money. And <clears throat> lessons learned, man. But you know, these fake ass YouTubers are getting on my nerves, and I'm about to start tearing some new booty because there's one girl, and she knows that she's basically lying. She has a drop shipping store, so she knows that for a drop shipping store to work, you have to have traffic. And she knows for affiliate marketing work, you have to have traffic. And she mentioned, she don't mention none of this in the video. And that's why I'm gonna rip her because she's consciously lying. It's not like a mistake. She's doing it because I watched her for a minute and if she has a video that isn't performing, she will take it down. She will take it down. And I'm not mad at her performing to be a successful YouTuber. I'm mad at her for blatantly lying people and misleading people. And I see a lot of this because a lot of these videos get the views, but this stuff ain't gonna make you no money. Ain't gonna make you no money. It, it just ain't gonna make you no money. So um, probably the first, because the way hire car works, uh, probably the first of August, I'll do an income report because uh, essentially it flips so once Ju June is 30 days, so uh, first of July, I'll do an income report and let you know what I've done because I should have 20 cars, but I only have nine cars that are rented. I got someone picking up a car today. And th this is one of the things is, once I refine my process, they're gonna have to pick up cars Monday through Friday. Right now, we're building, we're scaling, we we're, we're just wide open. So, but going forward, I'm not going to be doing this because essentially uh, I got other businesses to run. I got other things to do. And like, I can see that this become a full-time weekend gig if I'm not careful because people are last minute Larry's. They know they really need to rent a car instead of renting a car on a Friday. They'll wait until Saturday and they'll start searching, looking for deals, whatever. I don't care, but I'm going to do it now. But as we roll forward or until I get staff and right now, you know, I want to be at. I feel that if I can do 18 to 22 this month by August, because August, I will have at least 26 to 30 cars. I can do 30 in August. And that's going to give me. So probably not going to hire staff until December. So it's just going to be me and my, my assistant wrangling these cars, doing what we need to do. And essentially the process of getting the cars, getting them intake, getting them uploaded, that takes more time than renting a car. Renting a car takes like two minutes. Hey, let me see your ID. Here's the key. That's renting a car. And oh, it come back. Car comes back. It has no damage. Thanks. So renting the car and dropping the car off takes virtually no time. It's all this other stuff that takes all the time. I, I saw someone that was coming and that they were going to wait to get their dealer's license uh, to start buying cars. Don't do that. You're losing money because you're going like, I may have my dealer's license in July or August. I don't know. But if I waited to get my dealer's license, I would not be getting this valuable marketplace experience that I'm getting right now. So essentially what you got to do, and you will get better deals at smaller dealers. Like actually I bought this car from a guy, from a place that sells like a hundred cars a month. I got a really good deal on this. I didn't even have to haggle that hard because I 
like this car is right at private party Kelly Blue Book price. So if I wrecked it, I would get that price from my insurance company. So um, don't wait. Get out, buy a car, put it on the platform and start getting information. Because until you actually do it, you're not going to know. I don't care how many YouTube videos you watch. I don't care how many people you talk to. Unless you talk to someone in your market selling that has the kind of cars you have, that, that would be helpful. But other than that, get a car, put it out there, uh, just start it. Because if you're not, you're, you're losing time. You're losing time. Because if I waited until, let, let's say I got my dealer's license in August, I would have lost, I started this in April, May, June, July. I would have lost four months of data collection waiting to get my dealer's license. Four months of valuable, because like right now, I know things I didn't know before. I know things like essentially renters have the expectation that when they need you, you will be available even if it's in the middle of the night. <laughs> that, that's just kind of crazy. So uh, it, it's wild. It, it's just wild. But once again, um, you're seeing someone start a business from scratch that they never was a part of, don't know anyone in it, and they're doing it raw. And I guarantee you, by August, I'll be making more money per month than 99% of these YouTubers who are talking about Turo and Hire Car. You wanna know why? Because it started with cash. I talked about this before. I don't care what anyone tells you. Uh, if I was doing this with credit, I would not be where I'm at right now. Because I had cash, this has allowed me to scale up in five weeks, let's say two months, two months where people who have been doing this for four and five years i've already scaled up to their level in two months imagine where i'm going to be in a year in a year uh, i get people it's like hey you should talk to such and such i'm not talking to anybody i'm gonna tell you why i have no experience in the car business but i do have experience selling things to people i got 10 years of experience in that like the buying profile that's working well because i got some sweet acres at a screaming deal at a good deal and um that's pretty much what i'm gonna buy i'm just gonna have a fleet of acras hondas and camrys because essentially the new profile like i'm gonna buy five cheap cars for every expensive car i buy to have me a good ratio of cars that i know i'm eventually like I bought these five cars, one guy's renting one of those cars today, and that's gonna leave four still on the platform. And we will see, we will see, because essentially a uh, hire car has a program that I'm gonna probably enroll in Monday. And you know, we're just gonna go. But here, you're getting real information about the car rental business that you cannot get anywhere else on YouTube because everyone tells you about the money but they don't tell you about the trials and the tribulations. They don't tell you about the hassles. And like I said, I'm only in this five weeks. And one of the reasons that I'm experiencing this is because I'm scaling up pretty quickly. How many people have you watched bought 15 cars in one month? Not very many, if any, if any. And also, if you're going to buy like this, like I said, I got to figure out how to get this as an airport deal because that will get this out. But out here in Sandy Springs, it probably is not going to do that well unless hire car takes off. If hire car takes off, which I have a feeling it will, uh, we will see. But yeah, that's what's going on, man. That's what's going on. So that's your update <laughs> on this Sunday. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next one.